So if you've heard that music and mathematics can be closely related, well, you're right. And our next guest is the best example. She has a unique and a very special artistic profile. This Catalan pianist, mathematician and researcher is finishing her PhD in maths and music. And in the meantime, she is uh, presenting Nimbus, her second solo album of uh, contemporary music. Her name is uh, Laura Ferre. Welcome, uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here at the Weekly Mag. Thank you so much. Today, well, you have um, four important aspects in your life. You define yourself as a pianist, mathematician, researcher, and presenter, mm -hmm. fall in one. So how do you manage to combine all these uh, four elements? Well, I think that in a way I have two main interests. One is uh, contemporary music and try to disseminate that to the general audience. Okay. And the second one is mathematics and especially those connections between music and mathematics. So during my different uh, professional profiles, I try to combine all of these. So I have with my solo albums, what I try to do is precisely to uh, disseminate uh, contemporary works that are not necessarily being performed a lot in performance venues these days. And I also try to connect these works that I perform with their connections with mathematics. And uh, my, my profile of as a researcher and also a presenter, it's precisely in uh, trying to um, research deeper those connections and also how this can improve memorization and musical memory. And finally, also to disseminate the connections between music and mathematics. Tell us, how are music and mathematics connected? There are three main uh, connections. Uh, the first one would be mathematics as a fundamental of music, like in the aspect of rhythm, melody, harmony, um, or even the building the musical instruments. Right. Then there's this aspect of the musical cognition. All of us, when we are listening to music, uh, unconsciously we are actually doing a lot of mathematical processes to identify a musical instrument or see whether we are listening to, uh, to a melody or a melody with an accompaniment. And finally, there's the aspect of mathematics in the musical creation. There are like many composers that have used mathematics to create music, but also uh, mathematics are also present in, in the way of, of counterpoint, for instance, in the music for the, from the 18th century. So uh, I would say that mathematics have been very present in musical composition, but specifically in the 20th century, it has become also an extra tool to become a, a technique limitation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite impressive. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, you live between, uh, actually you live mostly in England, but now you're in Catalonia because yeah. of the, the pandemic and uh, you are uh, doing your PhD in Birmingham at the, at the moment. Tell us uh, what you're studying and uh, how's your life in the UK? Well, uh, for me, it was quite a contrast uh, because there's a completely different uh, industry in music and I think that musicians, they have a greater support when they graduate. But at the same time, I kind of miss uh, that uh, it is very difficult. There's like a crystal ceiling in terms of coming from, from uh, as a graduate student to try to get into the big venues, yes. which I think that in Catalonia is a bit easier in that way. Okay. But it, it was also like a great platform for me to, to try to understand better the, uh, how I, I can make a living from music. The type of music that you do is very special. Actually, you're trying to bring classical, contemporary music to, to all kinds of, to all audiences. Tell us, uh, how would you define, for the viewers who don't know what it is, how would you define this kind of music? Well, actually, type of music. yeah, it's simply uh, classical composers uh, that are writing uh, music nowadays. So it's like a, a, a natural um, evolution of classical music, but today, so there are like different musical aesthetics that represent our society, I would say. Brilliant. Well, Nimbus, your latest uh, album, um, is has a lot to do with water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Present us the album. What is, what is it about? What does it uh, include? Why is it called like that? Mm. Actually, my goal with Nimbus was to represent the metamorphosis of water, and each piece has a, a different aspect of water and in a, and a, dif a different shape of, of water, how it can be represented in music. I also try to portray uh, female composers that are underrepresented both in the concert venues and also in the, in the musical yes. recordings. And also I try to complete uh, an, a tribute to the French composer Olivier Messiaen. 
Actually, the album uh, starts from a piece that was written in the year of his birth, which was 1908. It's the piece by Maurice Ravel. I and then uh, the piece from his death that was written in 1992 uh, by one of his students who was Toru Takemitsu. And um, from these two pieces, the idea is to complement uh, this tribute and also to try to explain water from different perspectives. Okay, it looks very good, I must say. Um, this is, uh, like you said, your second uh, yes. album. The first one was called The French uh, Reverie, and it was uh, launched by, uh, you managed to launch it through crowdfunding. Yes. Just the same as Nimbus. Mm -hmm. And before the pandemic, uh, you actually did a tour in the United States. Um, but in that case, it was uh, for, with your first album, right? Yeah, it was a six week tour in Canada and the United States presenting the French Reverie. Okay. So do you think that crowdfunding is now the best way to, to be able to, to, to launch an album? I think when it comes to repertoire that it's not very well known, as is both in this case and in the French Reverie, it's like a very good tool for connecting with potential audiences that otherwise wouldn't find you. We are really uh, looking forward to listen to some uh, music from your album. I know that today you're going to play for us. Uh, what, uh, what are you going to play? I'm going to perform uh, On Sutin's Piano Tune Number no. 5, uh, which is written in the manner of the Toccata. And she's a composer from South Korea and was one of the most distinguished uh, students from Georgi Ligeti, who was a composer from Hungary, but that also studied in France. And she's quite an established composer nowadays, and I'm trying also to promote her music. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you think that this uh, type of music Contemporary, well, uh, modern contemporary music is uh, is um, uh, kind of accepted in Catalonia. Is it uh, is it starting to become more popular? I think that we need to do a lot of pedagogical uh, procedures in uh, like pre-concert talks, so people know uh, what are they going to listen. Because one of the problems of classical music is that people go to concerts and they already know all the repertoire, so there's very different uh, expectation. Like people don't expect something; they just want to reconfirm something. I think in theater it's a bit different because there's a more balance between the classics and the new creation, and that's what I try to achieve with this album. Okay, Laura Ferrer, thank you so much for coming to the Weekly Mag. It's been a pleasure. Good luck with uh, everything and thank you for sharing your time and your music with us. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. 